Folks, here we are with another chapter on collectibles. We promised we'd look at our Oriental collection. We have several ranges and types and prices, but you won't find any big museum pieces here. But it's going to be fun right here on my take on Home and Garden. We're going to start with the smallest things that we have in our collection and go on up to the biggest things. There's an awful lot to look at, but we're going to try our best and make it enjoyable. Here's a little example, which would have been a child's set, kind of in the colonial style. I put these around possibly before the war even and they're valued at about fifteen dollars the end of the war world war ii being 1945 so just as an example that little pair of men and women in the colonial style here's another pair of little women showing off their dresses or maybe they went to a ball or dining. These examples I want to show, which are probably, again, designed for a child, these are marked made in occupied Japan. Now, as we all know, occupied Japan would be after we won the battle in the Pacific and they surrendered in 1945, 46-ish. That's when these were produced. So compared to those at say $15, these are probably worth $30 or $40. So that's the difference when you're looking. Now we have lots of examples. Okay, now some of the names that you might recognize in uh, Japanese China and porcelain ware, one of the biggest ones for years and years is Nippon and that is this typically this style here we'll go through uh, a lot of different examples but this of course is a creamer for your coffee set this this is so precious and I'll tell you with any collection the thing they use the most is what's missing the most like in crystal where it's a water glass they got broke they used them the most. Tea, tea sets, cup and saucer sets. We have one in this. They're probably, certainly uh, after the war, they're, uh, I'd say, 50s. Now here's a dinner plate, and this is typical. Here's a, another coffee saucer, no cup. That, that's how tough. So here's the style, Japan. Typically they'll just say Japan. The finer stuff will have the Nippon name on it. So imagine getting that whole set. Now this one's really neat because it has the scalloped edge. And it's fluted and scalloped. And it's fine porcelain, really, made in Japan, even though some of it's missing. This is a real desirable set here. You can see that scalloped edge there on that plate, here on this teapot. Now, typically, when the spout goes all the way to the top, this is a chocolate pot. So hot cocoa. I think they were more into their tea and this could be a chocolate pot or it could be a tea pot. It's not a coffee pot because the, the coffee pot has the long stem. The tea pot we're going to show here. You'll recognize the difference. This is an obvious t example of a tea pot with the lid, hmm, with a winning lottery ticket in the inside. <laughs> mm. 
made in Japan and sometimes there's just a mark or a couple letters and it somebody that's really into it a dealer and they have all the books they can pin it down to a region where they were made today we don't we're not going to worry about that we just want to see beautiful you'll notice that I like to mix things so there's newer pieces this is made in China and there's a cute little set of these and a grouping of these but they go so nicely with the Oriental. So we're talking about China and Japan and even Indonesia. Now here's a cool piece and I wanted to show him as an example of what they call chalkware. And during the depression in the 30s the whole world was tight and things were tough. So they didn't have fine bone china or porcelain to use. This little guy there was a time where people got cocky and probably just tossed these in the trash. It might have been a kid's toy, but today they're really precious because there's so few of them that made it. So here's the little creamer. You can see it's scalloped here, made in Japan. That's the matching creamer here is the sugar bowl. Now you'll notice the paint jobs are quick and more primitive, slightly archaic, but they're still beautiful. It's just a style. It might not be everyone's, but it, it, it's just really fun. Between the regions, the styles, and the periods, of everything. Here's a very rare, this I know, this was my mother's, it's a toothpick and this goes back before my birthday so this is uh, early 50s. Here's a, a bedroom piece which would be for pins safety pins, maybe earrings, a little lidded. Then there's all kinds. I want to show you different salt and pepper styles. Look, look at how intricate. Look at the different style here. Same basic, hand painted. These, they'll use a stamped outline and then they'll color it in. This is another 50s piece. She's really cute. And this is from, I had to read it because I can't remember all of them, but Alexander Barker Company. And these, this is made right here in the U US. So she's certainly 50s. You can tell by the colors and the style, real basic. But she's cute as heck with, with the rest of it. This is mid-century modern, but it goes so good in here with the Oriental stuff. So I'm going to do a pan of this cabinet, of course, and you'll see that we just love the swans. There's two other ones in a different color. The dolls are special, too. Let me get behind you the camera so I can show you and talk about them. This doll is special and you know we're going to have to have a story. When I was in the Navy I was in the submarine force for five years and basic training was in San Diego, California. When I got out of basic waiting for a school I got the style for my mother. She had some oriental carpets. She was just starting to get into it. She had a couple of oil paintings and she had the Nippon sets. So 
in the moving and everything, she's lost one of her discs that she was carrying. Okay, now we're talking. Now we can see the little face. And get down in the cabinet. If you like these dolls, they're still available. You can get them from time to time. You can find them on eBay. There's the little screen I was talking about. There's a little jade egg. Here's another doll. And there's a couple more swans. And there's an absolute stack of dishes that go with that nippon set. I moved a couple things so you could see better in there and I can show you a couple more pieces that I got out of there. This is a little sake cup and there's a dragon and he's ultra cool. The, this is a spoon. Look how, look how different. Here's your sake cups again. Really delicate in this porcelain nippon. Look at the attention to detail inside. Now I imagine you could do pretty good with about three or four of these. Bing! <laughs> but also the style. Anybody would call this a three-footed cup. Because of the way it sits on the little feet. Now you've probably seen some of this in our other videos, but I've never been able to talk about it. These figures of men that are calculating with your primitive or basic calculators, these are really desirable. And there's two different ones here and they make up a pair. And we have another like that here is another oriental chocolate pot with six cups in that style and it simply says made in Japan. Now this looks, it's starting to look like English porcelain but not the same. Again, archaic painting or slightly primitive in comparison, but beautiful. Now this, a piece like this takes my heart. This I would see, this is a, a little flower planter. You would put cut flowers in it. It's ultra nice. It's got a bright shiny glaze. And I would see this at my grandma's house. So these are 40s and 50s. They might have just got into the 60s, stuff like this. I got this at a yard sale. <laughs> I just went nuts over it. You don't see them. You know, there's a lot of blue and white. Here's a neat piece in the blue and white. Now he's going to be a little newer, and they still make stuff like this. But they've always... <laughs> You can't look at this and not smile. The koi fish is a big deal in Japan. Uh, you know, they raise them for size and color. So that's what he's holding. And you'll see a lot of this in their wear. We have a pair of the pandas. And that that's bamboo they're next to, of course. And that... You can actually buy this bamboo, it's called Buddha Belly. You see why it's called that. Here's some more plates. There's a pair in different colors. There's a metallic enamel plate with the dragons. And I needed to make my way over to the other side of the dining room for this shelf, which shows another one of my favorites. You'll hear that a lot in the cobalt blue. I think this is a seven 
or eight. Eight-footed chocolate pot. Look at the detail here. Just out of this world. Bavarian plate behind, but here's your teacher, and he's reading to the class. He's a glazed porcelain piece. And I love her. Look at her. Look at the hairdo. She's Buddha-like, but I think she's in a prayer dress. Now here's another little vase in the Nippon. It's really good. Love it. I put that with these what they call mud men. Now some of you may know, some of you may not know. Mud men are really special and different. It's a particular clay they use. You see their face and skin. Any skin, arms, legs, feet, they're unpainted. That's the color of the clay. That's what makes these so special. Everything else is painted and glazed. Now here is an early, early example of a mud man. And he's kind of a Confucius looking character. About five inches tall. These bigger ones are newer pieces and I'm just nuts about them because this guy, if you can see him, he's an inkwell. These guys are fishing. One has a fish and one doesn't. And then there's the traveler mud man. You'll notice some similar dress and colors. I just got turned on to these in the last mm, year and a half. They're really good and they're affordable. Now we're going to look at some of the bigger vases. And I'm going to go over some of those names. You've probably seen our floor vases before. Now this is our largest piece and this is an example which most of our things are of the Royal Satsuma made in China. Some is still pricey but most of it is affordable. Not to be confusing but if you see Satsuma Moriaji Kotani made in Japan this stuff is very desirable and pricey. You could have a vase be two, three, four thousand dollars. So the vase on the right is Chinese. It's still very beautiful and desirable. It's slightly beaded. It has a feel to it. Also the ginger jar. This is Royal Satsuma at its finest. Hand painted Royal Satsuma made in China. Ginger jars were big. That was the first thing they used them for to move spices but of course they put a lot more than that in. Now this is just a modern vase but the color is fabulous and you can see it goes with the other things. This is a cute vase as well. It's a handmade piece. It's more modern. It's a four-handled piece. And does anybody realize what that's for? When this is in the middle of a table, you can grab it from any side, wherever you're sitting, see? You can grab it. This could be a condiment. Now there's another lidded jar and then of course the alabaster 
tangerine tree with the jade leaves. The whole egg collection are Royal Satsuma made in China. Like I say, they're mostly generally affordable. You can find a deal. Now a lot of us are familiar with all kinds of porcelain wares in the Nippon or possibly even the Kotani. This is a biscuit jar. It's really quite rare. It's wonderful. Three-footed biscuit jar. I'm going to keep him out of the way. This is a newer piece. This is a jumping koi. Again, very reasonable ceramic piece. I just went nuts over it to put it with the collection. Now there's another cute vase on the end. And the littlest little Satsuma egg that we have. That cream tangerine vase is a mid-century modern example. Now here's another pair of those, what do they, what do they call those? Abaki? I want to say the calculators, the, the early calculators. Let me know in a, in a message. Then we got these fun, fun Buddha like ceramic porcelain pieces. A lot of times Buddha is depicted with children. Alrighty. So, folks, I think we covered a lot. I don't want to keep you from your dinner. So if you like this content and you want to see more, share and like our video. Subscribe to our channel. And you can follow us on Instagram at my take on home and garden. Give us a comment, folks, what you'd like to see next. We're trying to mix it up and keep it interesting for you. We got tons and tons and tons coming. Because we're not going to let you down. We have plenty to show. Thanks for watching to the best subscribers in the land and around the globe. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.